Disney-owned ABC News is a little bit of a pickle here. You see, there's a story coming out on Radar Online, which they're reporting, and Daily Mail has picked up on. I have not sourced myself, but none of it surprises me, in which ABC News threatened to pull George Stephanopoulos off the air. Off the air! Because he dared to say what the entire world is thinking when he was asked by a TMZ reporter that he didn't know was TMZ, somebody just casually approached him on the street. Do we have this clip? I'd love to show you because this happened the other day and now he's in a whole bunch of hot water for it. Wait till I tell you what they're doing. Hey, excuse me. Hey, how you doing? Good. What do you think? Do you think Biden should step down? You talk to him more than anybody else have lately. And you can be honest. Serve four more years. You don't think you can serve four more years? All right. That's an answer. Hmm. Well, apparently he wasn't supposed to have given an answer. This became like a major thing at ABC News, according to Radar Online. I mean, they had to have a meeting with the president of the news division who had to have a meeting with the head of PR, who I'm sure was consulting somebody at Disney, right? Disney, 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 which owns ABC, but can't wait to unload the company. I'm telling you, Bob Iger is just dying to get rid of that thing. News Nation may wind up getting it. That's next star. Or some private equity shop that's willing to just kind of squeeze any kind of profitability it can out of that company until it really sees its bitter end. But they made him apologize, sort of, kind of. ABC's George Stephanopoulos appears to say of Biden, I don't think he can serve four more years. And then he had to issue a statement, you see, through a network spokesperson. Earlier today, I responded to a passerby. I shouldn't have. Well, that was brief, <laughs> very brief. But it took a lot of minds to come up with that little quote. So many minds and apparently a lot of pressure because the president of ABC News, according to the Radar Online report, is alleged to have said, you know what, you either apologize or you're off the air. So this is her. She's the news division president, I guess a relatively new one. They used to have somebody else. George Stephanopoulos gave his blunt assessment about Joe Biden's performance, writes the Daily Mail in their interview when he was ambushed on the street in Manhattan saying, I don't think he can serve four more years. Can you blame him? And yet here's the title, ABC's brutal ultimatum to George Stephanopoulos after his damning verdict on Biden. Apparently, only Joe Jake Tapper is allowed to say these kinds of things. And Joy Reid, Joy Reid, who just dissolved in near tears in this really awkward, I'm not even going to show it to you, cell phone video where she said she'd vote for Joe Biden even if he was in a coma. Whoa, lady, lady, lady. Do we have another picture of the news director? This is the woman who's running ABC News. I won't go there. <laughs> anyway, George is little. George is, George is quite little. Um, she doesn't look quite as little. Anyway, so uh, if you're listening to the podcast on Spotify, thank you. Uh, show us some love. Please give us five stars and a nice review. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, same thing. If you're watching, we're thrilled to have you here at the live show. I'm live every single day right here with you guys. We're going to get to some of your comments in just a moment. But uh, if you're watching live, when you can, later on, go over to Apple Podcasts. Go over to Spotify. And show the Trish Regan show a little bit of love. We want five stars, five stars only, please. And a nice little review. It helps. Listen, it really, really does. But that is the president of ABC News. And she's the one putting all the pressure on him. But can you blame George? I don't think we should blame George. I mean, I think George is just trying to be a good guy a fan stops and says hey so what do you really think he's like yeah i don't think he can serve four more years but do you think he can serve four more years after this remember this in the interview and if you stay in and trump is elected and everything you're warning about comes to pass how will you feel in january i feel as long as i gave it my all and i did the goodest job as i know i can do that's what this is about Okay, George, I'm going to hand it to you on this one. I don't hand it to you on much, but at least you spoke the truth. I don't like this idea that somehow journalists have to be behind this wall. I mean, here's the reality. Every journalist I've known has an opinion. And 
that opinion comes out in different ways. Even when they write their script and they try and make it perfect and really, really balanced, even just the tonality, right? The way that you express yourself, the way that you say things, the words that you choose to emphasize, that reflects your bias. And for whatever reason, ever since probably the Nixon era and Watergate in Vietnam, you have a bunch of libs running all these newsrooms. Right? I mean, that's just what has happened. Let's be honest. I've worked in so many of them. I, I used to work, uh, so was, I, I sat through Dan Rather, Bob Schieffer, and Katie Couric. Bob was actually pretty decent. He, you know, he's from Texas and everything over at CBS. But Dan, I had a great story on how Social Security had been privatized in Chile. Effectively, everyone was given kind of a, like a 401k, so to speak, but it was run by the government. It was yours, yours only. It was a really interesting system and a really interesting case study, sort of the only purebred case study out there on Social Security. I was not allowed to get this thing on the air. There was no way, no how, because Dan didn't like it because he saw it as a threat somehow to Social Security. And don't forget, Bush was kind of pitching the idea at the time. So that didn't happen. But you know what? Bob put it on his show one of the first nights with Katie Couric. Forget about it. You know what? I I could discover the cure for cancer I wasn't going to get on, nor, nor was any woman for that matter on that show. <clears throat> so look, the media is biased, okay? And, and that's, she's obviously biased to the left as well. Um, but y you have a, a media system and newsrooms all over the country. I remember being in San Francisco in the newsroom there, and they were cheering when Enron went down. I'm like, guys, like, this is not really a good thing, right? The whole financial system could kind of collapse around it. There's this weird mentality of us versus them, and they hate, they hate anything that represents sort of conservative American values and business and success and all this. So that's who the media is. And it's been exposed in a really massive way. They all have their opinions. Sometimes you hear about it. Sometimes you don't. But in the case of Georgie boy, his boss does not want him saying that opinion. You got to wonder, is it because he was threatened? Was she threatened by the white house? Was Disney threatened by the white house? We have learned that the White House has a lot to say about everything, including even the transcriptions of things like the goodest, right? Remember, he did say the goodest. We just heard it. He said the goodest. But no, no, KJP and her sidekick, TJ, TJ Ducklow, some 30 some odd year old little whippersnapper that he is, is fighting with the likes of Maureen Dowd at the New York Times saying, you can't say that because ABC News corrected the transcript. Think about it. ABC News corrected the transcript. Can we see the lady again? Because you know who it went to all the way to this one. Oh, do we have the woman? This is, the, you know, yeah, this one. She corrected the transcript because she's getting like a ton of bricks put on her by the White House. So they most likely, and again, knowing what I know about newsrooms and how this stuff goes down, most likely she got a phone call from the White House and people were really upset. And then it got escalated into this major, major thing. And the next thing you know, she's threatening to fire or take off the air George Stephanopoulos unless he issues some kind of apology. They pull in the head of PR and the next thing you know, he said what he said. Funny. I'll tell you, that's the problem with networks, at least cable, at least cable, even if they've got the likes of David Axelrod and Obama and David Pluff and the Rhodes guy in their ear, at least they tell you what they're thinking most of the time.